Hi there, everyone. We're at lesson 95. I am one self united with my creator. So it starts off saying, this describes you as your creator created you. And that creator knows. <laughs> you are one self, one with the creator, one with all of the other aspects of creation, and perfect unity prevails which means no change in us is possible. And now it says, you don't accept this. You fail to realize it only because you are terrified that you have changed yourself already. <laughs> you thought, oh no. You see yourself as this ridiculous parody on love's creation. You think that you're weak and vicious and ugly and sinful and miserable and... Oh, how bad can this get? Beset with pain. Such is your version of yourself, the self that you think you've made, this ego self that even has warring parts within itself, much less among all the ego selves. We think somehow we are just barely held together by this capricious maker of us, this ego thing to which we pray. And it says, well, don't bother. It doesn't hear your prayers because it's deaf. It's not able to see who you really are because it's blind. It doesn't understand anything whatsoever because it's insane. And this is what we look to for our support. Oh, dear. So now we're going to attempt today to be aware only of what can actually hear and see and understand. And our exercises are trying to have an experience of this actual united self, which is the truth of us and which we have never been able to change. And once again, it asks us to use the first five minutes and then it says, oh, we know that your mind tends to wander when you take an extended practice. That's why we're going to do some little short practices. Your mental discipline is poor, which is why we need mind training because our minds wander all over the place. So these shorter periods have these advantages because it calls out to us our reduced attention span <laughs> that we forget often and that the habit has not yet been formed to use these lessons as an automatic response when temptation sets in, i.e. when we find ourselves distressed about something. So it says, yes, you need structure. And regularity is called for now. Not that that's ideal, but it's good for us since our motivation is inconsistent. And then it reminds us that we remain heavily defended against learning. We are indeed reluctant learners. So we're going to try to do this. But if you miss do not make that an excuse to say, okay, I've ruined the day, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Just recognize that it's a mistake. It's a delay tactic. Keep right on going. The fact that we've delayed really doesn't interfere with our progress at all. Just forgive yourself for the lapse in diligence. Just overlook the whole thing. Don't give this mistake any power. Just say, okay, I made a mistake and move right on. Just keep correcting, keep moving. So let these errors of omissions, all the times that we forget, just see them for what they are. They are a delay tactic to keep us unaware of ourselves because we're afraid to let go of this ego self, as has been mentioned before. The ego doesn't want you to recognize that you are joined with every aspect of creation, that you are limitless in power and in peace, because then you truly will give up your little story of yourself. Okay, we're going to affirm this truth, and we're going to try to once again have some bit of experience of this within ourselves. So it says, okay, begin this way. I am one self, united with my creator. I am part of the collective consciousness. I am an aspect of the one collective consciousness that is still always forever in the heart of the creator itself. It doesn't ever go anywhere. 
I am one with every aspect of this one creation and limitless in power and in peace. And then it wants us to close our eyes and follow up with the idea, I am one self. I am the totality of everything that is. Just repeat this and keep reminding yourself that you are united, you're secure in light and joy and peace because that's what you are, that we are united with one creator and we have one goal, which is to bring this awareness into the focus of all minds. And this extends the allness and unity of love itself. We are oneself. We're complete. We're healed. We're whole already. We already have the power to lift the veil of darkness and let this light in us come through to the world. We are oneself in perfect harmony, united with one another, united with the creator that created us. So we want to feel this. Let this just make all the illusions we've held about ourselves be so uninteresting. This one self, which is completely innocent, completely the truth about you. Keep remembering that. It will help you dispel all the illusions you've created about yourself. And then it says something interesting that's new in its approach to us. We need your help, your part in bringing happiness to all the world. And we are looked to with confidence that we're going to do our part. So please be vigilant. Don't forget. Remember your goal because, and then it gets to be a little poetic. Every time we repeat the idea today, someone hears the voice of hope the stirring of truth within his mind, the gentle rustling of the wings of peace. So your acknowledgement, your claim to be this one self, united with your creator, is a call to everything that is, to know its oneness. So to everyone you meet today, you think about, you can silently say, I know, I recognize you are the one self along with me, united with our creator in this self, and I honor you because of what I am and what he is who loves us both as one. Have a beautiful day practicing a beautiful idea. Goodbye.